you can you can write this that we have changed the class of Friday to Wednesday, ten to twelve. And we only the show us. So, what is assurance? So we say, what do you call it? Because we have to understand our subject first. What do you call it? We call that an We call that inspection of financial statements. Or the transition um, of the aircraft. I think we should start when we get it. Examination of books of accounts, of financial statements. 
Um, um, she already said uh, about what is all this. Then when we saw you that way, we, we had the, just said, okay, let's wait for Matthew. But otherwise, the definition, there are so many definitions, but because the, uh, this book I took is ABD, so that is the, um, the Board of Audit Practices defines as audit being an exercise whose objective is to enable auditors to express an opinion whether the financial statement gives a true and fair view of the entity's affairs for the period uh, and ending to whatever year they are doing it. And this is the, what is the, uh, the uh, board explaining to us as being audited. So, we just have to know about the important parts of the um, audit, the definition, some parts of the definitions that we have to know. We have an auditor, an auditor is a professional who, by a written subjective matter, like financial statement, expresses an opinion on the subject matter. How about opinion? What is opinion? Opinion, this is a conclusion that is at using a set of criteria. So, how about financial statements? This is to ask something very easy because we know that the, uh, this is the, our subject and this is the, what we normally know. Uh, in the book, they are saying this complies the annual accounts which show performance of financial condition of an entity, the statement of comprehensive income, the statement of financial condition, statement of changes in equity, and statement of cash flow, and the notes of account. That's what they have explained being the financial statement. How about a true and fair, fairness? We start with the truth. Truth is having facts in accordance with the reason or a collective principle or receive the standard like generally accepted accounting principles, the GAAP and the accounting standard. It also means that the accounts have been correctly extracted from the books and the uh, records of accounts. So this is the, what they are telling us that the, when we are talking about the uh, truth, we are talking about exact things that was uh, extracted from uh, the books of accounts. Fairness, if we talk about fairness, uh, this means that the account should be reflect the commercial substance of the business entity and aligning transaction. The idea of fairness involves a number of thoughts which includes uh, one expectation, two relevant, three objective details. So if we talk about expect, expectation, that will mean in a user has a certain expectation from a set of accounts. And then when we are talking of relevant, uh, this means that the view given by the account will be relevant by like the information needed by the user. Objectivity this consists of ex external variable facts. And then we have so many of that that the these are just some of the expressions that we are going to meet in our, our uh, lecturing of audit and assurance. How about materiality? Remember in accounting we learned about reporting, we learned about materiality. What is materiality? What is materiality? Uh, way of treating this demon. 
material is being run. How? For example, if another organization says, if somebody maybe loses a 20,000 to pass it in material and make it more than 20,000, but another company, it will say 500,000. Okay? To us, anything below 500,000 is in material. That is, after 500,000, it is material. So, it depends which one um, is the, what is of this organization is saying is material. And today, that is not something that we can uh, talk about. Reporting framework, this we have ever done, this compliance of rules, or laws, regulations, guidance, and the other, um, let's say, company acts, concepts, and even accounting standards. What is the objective of an audit? What is the objective of an audit? This is, I think, continuous linear system from the same audit before. Right? But you have never learned from it before, is it? What is what is the objective of an audit? So make sure that the the results presented are true and fair. Okay. True and fair. That's the one objective. <coughs> How about benefits of an audit? Benefit of an audit. We can talk about the owners of the company. Um, um, are given an independent opinion as the truth and fairness of their account because they are the ones that want you to be. Uh, to uh, be doing business or you to be a uh, manager or to be an accountant or to be an auditor. The other thing, an audit gives more confidence in the financial statements used by say parties like banks. Because when you have no, uh, let's say, audited the financial uh, statements, they will not, they will not uh, say yes, you can give the loan or yes, you are a good company. No. They will always want you to have done something as a auditor. The auditor can help the director improve the business as a byproduct of audit through reporting weaknesses identified in the cost of audit. So you are the one that will take the, uh, the organization direct to where it's supposed to reach. We are only talking about audit. Uh, to report is proper 
accounting records of being uh, have not been kept. To report his proper returns from branches, if he has been uh, branches, uh, not been visited by the auditor, uh, and anything that they can receive. How about the rights of an auditor? Rights of an auditor. The auditor has the following rights under the Company Act 1994, Section 194, in order to carry out uh, about duty. So one, the right, first right, is that the right of access at all times to the books of accounts, vouchers, documentation of the company. So all books of accounts and all documentation, that's the right. What's that I will do this land. They are supposed to disclose all the books of accounts. The other, the other right is the, to, to require for the directors, employees of the company any information to the auditor thinks is necessary. We don't really need auditors to go and ask for something they would like. No! Even the highest person or highest lack in the company. You, if there's that uh, requirement, you have to go and ask him. Because that's your right. To report his financial statements are not in agreement with the books of accounts. Okay? Because if you are talking of financial statements that have extracted this information from books of accounts, but are they really in agreement of each other? If they're not, that is supposed to be known and reported by you, and that's your right. Again, to consider if any information in the director's report is inconsistent with the accounts and report any such instances. We <laughs> basically get if there are indications that the material error and fraud are uh, encountered. This would have already also talked about recently. If we talk of material, it means if a company has said up 50,000 is not material or less, if you see that amount, you can't report. But when you have seen that the amount for that company material uh, starts from 50,000, if it's 50,001, you are supposed to indicate or report if you found it in the where you are doing the um, duty. So there are so many rights. Rights to receive notices and attend meetings um, um, and to report on any matter concerning you as the audit. So you can be given a notice that you are supposed to come and attend the meeting here. That is very common to all of us, so that's your right. The other right is to make a report on, uh, on the findings, including failure of directors. Director to provide these with information and explanation is indeed necessary. What can we say? There's no way they can say we are not going to give you that um, information. That is not their right. You, as the auditor, are supposed to seek for that information if you want it. Right to be heard when making a presentation during the meeting. You can be asked to go and present uh, something in the meeting of the organization where you have been either called or you are in there as part of the organization. Right to a reasonable remuneration. So that is the so that's some of the uh, rights. You are going to read them in the book. Then now we come to assurance. What is assurance? Assurance. Assurance 
is one. So, why is assurance important? The main purpose of assurance is to provide comfort on the subject matter. An assurance may also have the following benefit. An assurance provides an independent professional verification on the 
service man. So you give the organization independence of verification of what you have done. It may also give additional confidence to uh, to the organization or to the party that you are auditing or organization is that you are auditing. It gives additional confidence to the organization or the party that you are involved in or detail. Again, it is the availability of independent checks and prevent error of control to be committed and also reduce the risk of management biases. If you give us an assurance, they are going to be real confident, and not only that, they are, they are going to say, yes, the checks are, are really done well, and there are no errors, no fraud, no nothing. Therefore, it reduces the, uh, uh, the risk of management biases. It ensures that high quality and liable information exists within an organization. Imagine. So the quality of the work is going to be um, confirmed, or um, uh, the people you have audited or organizations to be to have confidence because of audit and assurance. So assurance is the very, very important. Again, it helps boost the stakeholders' perception towards the organization, attitude towards the environment, and also uh, its stakeholders. What are we talking about? Um, always, when the, um, you have an assurance audit, every organization it means it's confident even to advertise itself. Even the people that are working in the organization, they will even be proud of their organization because of that. So, political assurance is a very, very important thing of um, organization or in this world. Because if we talk about it, um, political assurance is something that we should be really have confidence for each and every organization that uh, has got a branch of policy and Auditors, legal liabilities and responsibilities, as an audit and assurance, uh, we are supposed to um, to know the legal liabilities and responsibility for us, because if we are talking only unsure, it means we should then we know the uh, responsibilities and liabilities of an auditor. It's part of our cost of life, so we can't skip it out. We are supposed to learn. Uh, legal
qualification to one project. Qualification, you can't just employ somebody who has not even gone to school. Although he has a degree, but he didn't even uh, take audits in his subjects, not even audit assurance. How can you pick him to be one of your office auditors if he is unqualified? So appointment, um, we base on um, the uh, qualification. They are telling us that a company shall at the end of general meeting at which financial statements are presented, usually once a year, uh, not that it is the company or shareholders who appoint the auditors. So auditors are appointed by the shareholders. The appointment is for the period of time known as tenure of office and is the, from the conclusion of meeting to the um, uh, in the following annual general meeting at which financial statements are laid. So um, the uh, shareholders are the ones that we appoint the auditor. The auditor's record appointment is the that. So, appointment of auditors, directors of the company, in exceptional circumstances, directors of the company can appoint auditors either to fill a casual vacancy, for example, when the existing auditor resigned. So what are we saying? We are saying that auditors can be appointed by the shareholder, but it can also be appointed by directors of the company if there is that need that someone has resigned. Therefore, directors also can have that uh, um, a path that it can also appoint the auditor. Appoint the first auditor between the death of incorporation and the first AGM, or if the company qualifies uh, to have an audit before the next AGM has not been However, in both cases, members must then reappoint the auditor at the next AGM by ordinary dissolution. What are we saying? We are saying that if this one has resigned, why the next meeting is going to come soon, then we are going to say we are going to stop, we are going to have an appointment in the next meeting and a general meeting. That's the AGA one talking about. Okay? Yes. So if you have just done the uh, annual general meeting, and these three auditors designed by the directors of the company can be happy to choose an auditor or appoint an So appointment of auditors by registrar of companies, how does it happen? In the very rare circumstances where the auditor has not been appointed at the appropriate time, the registrar of companies will then appoint auditor. Okay? If it's in their cases that the registrar of companies can come in and appoint the auditor. So when or qualifications of an auditor? Because we are talking of appointment, what are the qualifications of an auditor? A person is eligible for appointment as a company's auditor if he is, if he is qualified under the Public Accountant and Auditors Act. That's when The auditors must be members of the recognized supervisory body and if the auditor 
is the film. The film must be controlled by members of the recognized supervisory body. For example, if we we are auditors, we are supposed to register under the Public Accountants and the Auditors Act. There is a board for that. You're supposed to be uh, subscribing a, a registration fee every day. So there, you are going to recognize you as an auditor. Not only that, even an accountant, you have ever heard that accountant also register. Uh, there is a board that we, uh, we are supposed to. So this is what it means when you are going uh, for the qualification, you are supposed to uh, do the uh, registration of whatever is possible. Hello? Hmm. Ah. Eh, it's not a meeting, but at one. But no one didn't move class, but a few. Which the auditor concise 
should be brought to the attention of Myanmar through credit. For example, through the through the trading, through the trading, Cuba, Manuna, Cuba, 